People only see, yeah. oh, we ran a 10 second, oh, lack of not. Must be nice. They bought all the mods and just on any manufacturer, I'm not going to mention names, I'm not get a law, uh, lawyer's letter. Mm-hmm. The more that we talk about the stuff, the more it's like light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. Again, if you're not exposed to it, you won't understand. People don't see the 12 o'clock, the 1 o'clock, the 3 o'clock mornings, the 4 o'clock mornings. We're still in the shop, haven't gone home, haven't slept, either getting a bike ready for racing. or. Co- and it's because of the passion. Yeah. Um, Chris Moore is next. I told, I told Kovas, when he goes, he goes 8-1, I'm calling Chris Moore out. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever reply to that. Hi, guys. I'm just joking. What is up, guys? <laughs> What is up guys, welcome to our podcast, me and Rahul have decided to start a new thing, we're going to do podcasts from now on, we're not sure how often we're going to do the podcast, but we'll see once it gets going, we actually want to get people on board, drag racers, people in the car community, it doesn't have to be drag racing only, uh, anyone in the car scene, like tuning shops, accessory shops, all of those things, people in the storm scene, we want to get everyone involved, and get a bit of a behind the scenes to show everyone what what the car culture is like in South Africa. So for those who don't know, this is Raul from Colab and myself, obviously. We Today is only going to be a bit of background for from our side, because going forward, uh, everyone that comes onto the podcast, we're going to be speaking to them. Mostly Raul will do the talking work. He likes to talk way more than me. So... Um, Raul is going to do most of the talking with most of the time, but today is to give you guys a bit of background where we come from and where we fit into the industry. So I think we'll start with Raul. Uh, Raul is the owner of Colab Tuning. He's going to explain to us what he does here and his part that he plays in the drag racing community. Hi guys, yes, as Etin says, I'm Raul from Colab Tuning, the owner and founder of Colab. Um, so yeah, thanks again for Etin utilizing his time and his experience with videography as you'll know he's got his own channel ccd video so yeah at collab we modify cars service cars maintain cars do warranty claims you know the general rmi approved workshop stuff that we do and then build race cars you know that's what we love so, and that's how we met you uh, through yeah. racing i think we share the same passion in yeah so basically anything you want to do on a course what you do yeah 100 percent. we'll on, try to just change. on the other side of this wall which we can't see now but <laughs> We'll probably at some stage go and sit down there with some cars and have a chat about that as yeah, well. Yeah, at some point we'll do a walkthrough maybe and just for the guys to have an idea as to what we are, where we are, what we do. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so then let's talk about the drag racing because I feel like that's more where we show our connection from. Mm. Um, I met you years ago when you had the RS3. We didn't know each other that well back then. Yeah. And then as soon as you moved over to the bikes, we, we started chatting way more and stuff. And now you're back into a car, but you still got the bike. So what's happening there? Yeah, it's a funny story. So when I look back at that, um, you took a video of me doing a burnout on my RST, and that's how I approached you. Because at I Desi. wanted At Daisy. I actually wanted that video footage. Not knowing that day that you guys were also there with the bike. I didn't know that you had an affiliation with Marius Lloyd Racing, who's helping me with my bike. Eventually, I put the puzzle together and then put two and two that you're also very good friends with them. And that's how we then obviously made contact, and we've been friends ever since. So yeah, look, the cars, for me, I enjoy cars. I love cars. Um, there's a lot of politics which we'll get we'll get to um, later on for in the sure, podcast. Yeah. You know, that's why, again, we want to show people the other side of what happens in our lives and what we do and why we do it. There was a lot of politics, um, a lot of bitterness, lost a lot of friends along the way. Um, in, 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 a, in a sense that not to death, but lost friends because of the politics. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to take a break from that negativity, regather myself. I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I chase adrenaline. Um, I started losing that feeling, you know. When I ran that nine second down at Desi, it, it was an immediate call for me. I was like, I, it didn't feel fast. I'm done. You know, I need to chase the next big thing. And then I got onto a bike. So, yeah, from there onwards, I haven't looked back. I really, really enjoyed the bike. Took a two year break from cars, um, but my business is based on cars, you know, so I can't, I need to look out for the business as well. So I got myself something that. A lot of people can relate to it's an affordable car it's a, it's a pretty much a fast car you can use it daily Tell them what you are racing now for those so who we're don't racing, know yeah so we're racing a golf 7r 2015 model golf 7r full stage d build um build motor upgraded clutches it's not a lot of mods it sounds a lot when you speak about it but it's it's almost basically bolt-ons and you have a 10 second car you know with the new technology you would hear the terminology and you've always been around 
old school drag races in the newer generation. They talk about PlayStation cars. Unfortunately, this is where the world has gone. You have to keep up with technology. You know? course, so yeah. PlayStation cars are the new thing. They are the way to go. You know, overseas in the States, they've gone eight seconds with, with the new GAT M3 with bare mods, you know, bare minimum mods. Um, the new 240 has already gone seven seconds, and that's a car with aircon. Yeah, air that bags, is insanely you know. fast for a daily driver, if you can put it like that. It is a daily driver. You know, the, we talk about a street car, a daily car. So you could street drag, well, you could street uh, a car with a parachute. You could yeah. street a car with skinnies on it. It's what you choose to street. I, yeah, I guess daily. at the end of the day, it comes to what you prefer to drive on the street. Exactly. I've seen Prian on the street drive his Supra. Yes. With his big slicks, with a parachute hanging off the back, and he drives it on the street. In and Mid-Wall. so that makes it a street car. Exactly. Yeah. Some will debate it and say, well, look, it's not a street car because of X, Y, and Z, but we, we're not yet to be the, the, the decipher of that. So, yeah. But, yeah. yeah um, and yourself, CCD, I've actually, for the time I've known you, I've never really chatted too much about how you got involved in the in the industry and the passion for it? So for me, it started, I think it was 2019, 2018, right before COVID it started, when I started filming the drag racing. So me and Quibus from MLR used to be on the street five, six, seven days a week street racing. Whether we're racing, whether we're watching, we would be out every night doing that. And it got to a point where I realized we see and do a lot of cool things which other people don't get the opportunity to experience or they don't know about the scene. And that's actually where this started. I mean, you go to the track. Nowadays, it's easy. There's a lot of content creators out there that does this type of thing. But back in the day, you would go to the track, you film your car, and what do you do with the video? Nowadays, you go to Facebook, you go to Instagram. But five years ago, we didn't have that stuff. So we are basically living the dream but everyone else in the community, they don't know where's the events, they don't know nothing. So they don't realize what we do every day or yeah. every weekend for that matter. Yeah. So it just started from there and then it evolved into traveling around with all of you guys. And it's just growing day by day. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing, you know, and again, we've touched on the topic of, of the people only see the, the, the edited footage and the niceness, you know, of the snippets or whatever, the videos of our runs and our personal best and everything that happens at a track, one doesn't actually realize the amount of effort, time, money spent in the background of this on your side, how much of time it is and effort it is to get that out. So from my, from, from my side, I'd like to say thank you for that. You know, we've got a lot it's of a business, I would say, out of it, but you also got exposure in, in a nice way. And again, it's something that you've doing. A lot of people can't come to the racetrack. They're either working or they can't afford it or whatever. Well, they might don't be. know when the events are. 100%. They don't see... Promoters can only do this much to get the events out there, yeah. but still not everyone is going to be aware of when and where the events are. Yes, yeah. And then obviously there's work and other stuff that yeah. gets in the way. 100%. And again, with you putting it up on your YouTube channel, it's just exposure to a lot of more people who don't know or can't be there, like we said. Funny enough, I had a guy who was following me on my page, my personal page with the bike. Um, he actually asked me about you and if I, if I could share your live link if you were to go live. Because he's actually watching all your lives. That's how he's in touch and in sync okay, with what's yeah, going yeah. on here in SA. Yeah. So, so touching yeah. on lives quickly while we are there, the difficult thing, oh, most of our tracks is at remote locations. So you'll yes. know the reception is always bad at the track. Yeah. So there is ways that you can go live, but it's not always easy. Like middle where we're going to after this. Yeah. The reception is horrible there. Yes, it's yeah. always a struggle with reception there. So unless you go with like a full-on setup and these guys that do it, yeah. uh, SK Racing is one of them. It, there's ways that you can do it, but for me, it's I don't like yeah. that. I like standing on the line, filming everything. Look, the editing afterwards, that's a whole other topic. That's a lot of work, um, which you don't have to do with a life, but... Yeah. That's the way I prefer to do it. Yeah, I, and I think also with, with the way you do it, you're a lot more involved, which also puts you, it separates you from the rest. You Like I've watched, again, I've watched all your videos that you've made prior to even recording myself. From the driver's name to the driver's car to the power that it makes or even the drive line in the car to their PBs, you, you, you keep very well in sync with that. You know, it's something small, but something a person like me would appreciate because it's easy to put a, a camera there record the situation and boom, okay, Etienne ran a seven second pass. But it, it becomes a lot more personal and a more appreciated thing when Etienne's like, 
I'm chasing that eight second pass with my bike. The fact that he knows I didn't just run a nine one or a nine zero. You gave nine point zero two five. Like it, it shows that you're passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's it's again not doing the live. I think what you do, you do it quite well. So yeah. Again, we'll obviously see Etienne. I'm sure he'll post a video of tonight's racing from Midvar. It's like a mini cash cash night. Um, but yeah, Etienne travels literally, guys, everywhere, whether it be Cape Town, uh, Joburg. He, he, he travels nationwide to cover footage. And again, we want to just want to say thank you for that. I don't think he gets enough thank yous and, and, and for yeah. a zero fee. And so how did we get him drunk? We get him drunk on the <laughs> other case. You know, more than one occasion. <laughs> I got some videos of Etienne misbehaving, but I won't post it on social media. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. A lot of people think that this is for money and stuff. This is definitely not for yeah. money. I can tell you that. This is for the passion of drag racing. Because like I tell you, I've been at the drag racing way before I started this. Yeah. Uh, I've actually been way more at the drag racing before I started this. Now I'm... Um, basically restricted to cover big events or not yeah. big events uh drag racing on the on the track uh, i'm not allowed to do street racing and that stuff yeah. anymore because of certain stuff that we're busy doing mm. so it's it's not for the money i yeah. promise you i don't make money from this i can yeah. show you um i need to work during the week to to be able to afford to go Which to Cape Town for, yes. and to go to Makuzi and all of these yeah. events and people don't realize how expensive it is. Even for me, that's not a drag racer. Yeah. I don't even want to know what it costs a drag racer to have his car at all events. Like yeah. George, for instance, he's this year he's been going hard. He, I don't think he's missed an event this no, year. No, he's, he's done every event. He's done sure. almost every event. He just yeah. blew up his tower, so that's a lot of money out of his pocket again. Um, but it's a lot of money to travel. Petrol is expensive, all of that stuff. So this is, it's for passion. And I enjoy having someone like you or guys when i get to the track they come and thank me for the videos or they come and greet me and say thank you i watch the videos that stuff yeah. that's what makes it fun for me yeah. i enjoy that yeah. to get to get the whole community together yeah not not have but for instance cape town do their thing durban do their thing us do our thing yeah have everyone together and you know when we go to cape town and durban or whatever the guys know us i feel yeah. a lot better since they get to watch us very more often than yes. they used to five years ago yeah, so yeah. that they, they Build more of a connection, and I yeah. feel that as well. People come and greet me, and they have a connection with me, yeah. but I haven't met them before. I but I'm on their TV <laughs> how many times a week. So that's that's what it's about for me. I, I, I'm trying to recall now. I don't know if it was Cape Town. I don't think you're down. You weren't in Cape Town with us. It was one of the. It was out of a, It was an out of town event. It might have been in Kuzi. Now standing behind you. And um, Oak rocked up to you and he's like, hey, Etienne, how are you doing from CCD? And I could see in your face, dude, you didn't know this Oak for a bar or so. But this Oak, the way he approached you, like he knew you from like high school yeah. days. And I was, you see, for me, I'm bad with faces, yeah. first of all. So whenever someone greets me, I need to think, damn, have I met this guy before? Yeah. Where did I meet him? You know, and then I realized, okay, I haven't met them. Yeah, okay. Most yeah. of the people that come and greet me, I haven't met them. Yeah. But like I say, that's, I enjoy that. I enjoy that to to know that the people are supporting and following and watching and people are bored at home and they yeah. need something to look at and like i said they don't have the opportunity like we to be at almost every event that there is people, pretty much our weekends are taken with racing if you think about it if you really want to do we could go and, and race almost every weekend yeah. touching on the topic of street uh, street racing and you said obviously you don't partake in it you don't condone it or whatever it might be um what is your take on street racing do you not feel that street racing was actually the is a is a is a big culture in the sense that it gives people an opportunity because a lot of people are scared to go and race at big events do you feel that there should be a a tie between the two with street racing that could feed through to 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 big events so i might be mistaken but the way i feel is almost everyone starts on the street i mean that's the easiest yeah you take your dad's car when you're 16 you're gonna have fun where do you go you go to the street you do a race go home whatever so i feel like most of the people start at the street and it's yeah. easy for us to go to the track for me uh, i've got midway is close to us that's about 20 k's from us which is far for you but that's the closest track other than that i've got dalton and mitchell which is over 100 k's from us yeah so to travel is it's difficult but if we go to street racing i can go to a lot of events in my area mm. so i think people start from there and then they realize about the dangers involved in street racing people sitting on the side of the road standing on the side of the road there's no paramedics when something goes wrong 
Uh, there's no scrutiny yes, to make sure that your car is safe. You do that for yourself, which yeah. a lot of people fail in. We've seen that even at the track now when they started bringing the scrutiny yes back or uh, be more strict about it. We've seen that a lot of people struggle with it. Yeah. The, the cages and stuff is not proper. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's everyone starts at the street and then eventually we all move to the track. And like I say, some people will stay on the street forever. Yeah. But the thing is, at the track, it's a lot safer. The the safety measurements is in place. So yeah, makes sense. That's that's the end goal. It's actually scary now that you're talking about safety. You know, obviously, with, we're not going to mention organizations' names and stuff. But when one of our a well-known track of ours that we race obviously got affiliated with this association, or well associated themselves with this whatever you want to call it entity, um, the rules that they implied to to make it safer for ourselves. I found it extremely weird and strange that the competitors were kicking back at it. I'm like, at the end of the day, it's your own safety. It's for you, not you for... You fighting with them and telling them how bad they are and how stupid they are and crazy they are for you not having the right roll cage, you not right having the right seat belt, or you not having the right... But it's your own safety at risk. Yeah. But we've become so... And I, I don't say we, or I don't want to generalize, but sometimes we think as humans that that can't happen to us. We're not going to roll the car. We're not going to crash a bike. Or it can't happen to us. It might not happen to us. We're naive to the fact that it potentially can. You know, in, in terms of what we do, is not a, it's a dangerous sport. You know, it is a dangerous sport. Having the safety measures in place um, is, is of utmost importance. So, yeah, I think, look, I've, I started off with street racing. I'm not going to lie, I still do street racing. I think I always will. The, the kick behind drag racing on the, or racing on the street is just a different feeling. You know, it's... Street credit is what we want. I think street credit is the latter yeah. part of it. So yeah, the best part for me is when you get to put your hazards on. Then you know you want. <laughs> if I get to put my hazards At least on, make sure you in front when you put them on. But right. I need to tell you a funny story about this. So you might know Dean. He used to drive a one point nine T. Yeah, 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 yeah. Easier. So back in twenty fourteen, it was I had a, a, a Astra G O P C, just bolt on mods. Um, eventually decided to put nitrous on the car. I used to love nitrous. Put nitrous on the car and. I never knew how fast the 1.9 TDI was. I used to hear of stories, but I mean, when it came to golf 6Rs and Focus RSs and all that stuff, I used to beat them quite comfortably. And this was at Wadeville Drags. That's where my racing actually started. My love for racing started. So um, anyway, I raced Dean with his 1.9 TDI. First gear, we launched, I'm in front. Second gear, I'm in front. Third gear. Now third gear, you may be halfway down the strip. Yeah. Me being cocky, I put my hazards on because I was about a car and a half. And I'm like, you ain't closing a car and a half. I got nitrous. But when that hit fourth gear, he passed me. I couldn't believe it. And till today, me and him, when we see each other, we laugh at the fact that I put <laughs> hazards on halfway down the track and you overtook yeah. me after that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he also probably got in the gas. He also so. got in the gas. And I never knew he had gas. Eventually, yeah. he told me. I was like, yeah, but I was fine. I was holding that button. And normally, you need to release the button when you shift. I was like, I ain't losing today. I held that button and I shifted. Yeah, back in the day, I used to hide my nitrous as yeah. well on the TDI. I, I did it, a bigger turbo upgrade. And while the car was down for that, I decided to do the nitrous as well. So I put it behind the passenger seat in the car here yeah, okay. with, a, with a blanket on. So when the doors open, because it's a two door, obviously. Yeah. So when the doors open, you can't see the bottle there. Bottle, yeah. And it's easy for me to reach. Yeah. And I did it in the same time frame, so no one would know that it has nitrous mm. except for my tuna. Yeah. And um, we raced on the streets, and guys would come from far to race me, mm. because I used to beat everyone on that side, and then guys would come from this side, drive to us to come and beat me, and then I would I would win them, but they wouldn't know about the nitrous. And then a couple of years went by, and I'm like, I'm tired of hiding this. Yeah. It's, if you don't <laughs> want to put nitrous, that's your problem. 100%. So there's no more... Hiding mods and stuff, which I feel like nowadays is it's difficult in the car scene. Before, you would do small things. You would sit at home, look at your car, think with a small thing, maybe gain something, maybe lose something. Then, you know, don't touch there, go back. Yeah. Whereas today, if you buy something like your seminar, you know, you're going to do downpipe intake, this, you're going to do these clutches, you're going to do this turbo. So, it's, it's more of a general thing now. Yeah. Whereas before, everyone did their own thing. And in private, and then you get to the races, and it's it's racing to see if yeah. it worked, whatever you did during the week. Whereas mm -hmm. nowadays, it's it's a lot easier. Oh, how can I put it? I don't want to say easier, but you know when you buy a car, you're going to do this and this and this and this. And maybe your tuner will say, okay, we need to look at this. But you know the options 
to make a 10 second, 10 second or 9 yeah, second the recipe goal is there. whatever. The recipe is there. Um, I think where, where I feel that it's, it's a, it, nowadays it's a lot harder to separate yourself from the rest because of that. Yeah. You, know, you can buy a downpipe, you can buy hybrid turbos. The hybrid turbos we use, it's readily it's, available, it's available for everyone. You know? So we need to now think even more out the box, you know, how, how do I get my car faster than that car with the same mods as me? And we've seen that many a times. Um, you know, and again, talking about mods like nitrous, and, and we've seen that from back in the day, people will complain, oh, but you got nitrous. So go buy it. You, it's at the shop. I'm not anyone. Anyone. You, anyone. you know, again, the, the thing is also people's uh, fast and the furious. People think, okay, well, if I press a button, my car's going to explode type of story. People think that nitrous is, is actually an explosive or it's it's not. It's not flammable as well. So, yeah. you know, a lot of myths and stuff that people don't understand. And I think also going forward with the podcast, just a bit of educational stuff also in between. Just to, A lot of people don't know. You know, if you talk to a lot of guys who love cars, don't even know simple things again, like you say, like nitrous is not explosive. Yeah. It, it won't explode. Because everyone doesn't want to put nitrous in, like, oh, my car's going to explode. No, yeah. but your car's not going to explode. We're yeah. fortunate enough that we we basically do this seven days a week, both cars, yeah. all of that stuff. So we we uh, expect people to know things that yes. we know. Yeah. But we are the ones that's supposed to teach them. Teach them 100%. Because Let's say you buy your first car. You didn't know everything. Yeah. It came with years of experience. Your father telling you, do this, check this. So I think, I feel like we need to help the people to understand things like that. Because like I say, we feel like people should know that stuff. Yeah. But they should be taught that stuff. And it's true well. what you say. I, I, okay. So I had a, uh, I'm not going to say too much, but the other day, a person phoned me. We had just worked on their car. Um, and they had an oil issue, so the oil cap was loose. They topped up the oil some, well, they didn't. I'm assuming the, the petrol attendant topped up the oil for whatever reason. And how I started, fit, I had to actually do reverse psychology or reverse and understand what this customer is trying to tell me because, like, his oil is short and there's oil all over the engine bay, but he can't check his oil. He doesn't know how to check his dipstick or doesn't know how to check his oil level. And it's a simple, for me, I'm saying that it's simple, matter of pull your dipstick, clean it, put it back and check that or there's oil level. Or nowadays check it on the computer because you don't have a dipstick 100%. Anymore. But I knew that that car, I don't want to say the car was in the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. I don't want him to for feel sure. that I'm picking on him. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, but that's like the first thing. How do you not know how to check oil? But again, yeah. like you say, because we work on it seven days a week, we think in something as simple as that, yeah, it's not as simple for the next person out there. So I think also going forward, we we could do some, you know, just brief talks on certain things, which will help me and you obviously educate the people out there because you also, guys, Etienne's business also he does modifications as well. So CCD isn't just um, video videography and a YouTube channel. He does yeah. software downpipes on cars, exhaust systems, other modifications as well. So yeah, yeah whereas I'm also into the TDI scene because yes. I grew up with the TDI. Yeah. Um, it was actually my second car that I bought, so I grew up with that, and I don't know, it kind of stuck ever yeah. since, man. Has anyone ever told you what TDI stands for? No. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know what it stands for, but I feel like you've got something else going on here. It's a bit of an inside joke, but we got a buddy, well, we call him a TDI, a terrible dark Indian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. But yeah, dude, 1.9 TDI made its made its name made for a car that you could get a thousand Ks on a tank of fuel and you could go racing with it. We could yeah. call that a, a, a daily race car or your daily car that yeah. you could race. I mean, we've got the fastest that we've got now in the country is currently Eddie. He's on a 11.0. And if you... 11.0 does not sound fast, to be honest with you, but if you go and check his setup and what the guys have brought around with his setup, yeah. I'm pretty sure that car can go into the nines if he gets a proper Probably, track. Yeah. So I can't wait for Dalton to, to pick back up. And, and they're busy doing that now, but obviously the traction is not what it yeah. was five years ago. So it's going to take another year or two to get back to that point. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that car, it'll go low tens, if not yeah. nines, with that TDI. Yeah. I can't see that it, it won't happen. Yeah, it's 100%. supposed to happen. It's, yeah, that car is making a lot of power. Oh, it's strong. Yeah. So yeah. Talking about tax, we'll go back to that now. Before I forget that, when you're talking about a time and you say eleven zero again, I understand. And eleven zero for that car is flying. Um, we had a Polo that we were trying to break the twelve for a long time. We eventually went eleven eight, and people are like, oh, it only went eleven eight. There's a TTRS that goes eight. People don't understand. 
it's fast for what it is. So you've yeah. got a seven second car, a potential seven second car should go seven. We're not talking about a potential seven second car that's running 12, because that's poor. Yeah. For example, you know, yeah. people misconceive the time um, time fa- facet of racing. Because when you talk, you know, I see guys, I see that midval happen a lot or at any track for that matter. You can see the Oaks spent his life savings, he's really trying his best. He's run a 11-0 or a 12-0 for his class and he's worn his class. He's the fastest for the day and he's most likely even broken the record, the South African record for a 12-second class. But no one applauded the Oak because it's 12 seconds. It's a 12-second class. People don't class, understand yeah. 100%. It's like, well, oh, that's only 12. People don't know that a time bracket, is a, you, you attach it to an overall thing, which shouldn't be the case because realistically speaking, a 1.9 TDI is never going to see an 8-second pass or a 7-second pass. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not possible in the long down future. It may yeah. be, it is or soon to happen, but it's just realistically we need to accept and appreciate and acknowledge what a car can and can't do yeah. and, and what it should be doing. Yeah. yeah. For instance, with a proper drag car, you can have two cars running the same engines, but one has this gearbox, one has this gearbox. Yeah. And their times can be way out. Way out, 100%. Completely different just because of that or something as small as suspension. Yeah. If one has a, a, like a stock suspension, one has a, a falling suspension or something for that matter. It could be completely different. Yeah. So, talking about, we are talking about tracks now. It's been something we've, for as long as I've been racing, um, people been preaching, crying, complaining. We have to make do with what we have. Um, we obviously know the, the, the forthcoming of the track issues we have in South Africa. So other people know that our track, our tracks is not anywhere close. I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I haven't been overseas, but from the people I've spoken to, people that have been there and came back and said, listen, our tracks are not even half of what theirs are. You know, South Africans are doing very well, bike scene, car scene. For what, we, we've got a lot of world records here. And on the poor conditions that we have yeah. you know, back on tracks. So, I mean, you've also been around to all the tracks. And uh, you can vouch for that, that we race the track, actually. You know, our oh, cars sure. got the best of the best. Uh, you know, and again, as South Africans, we always want to be better than everybody else and put the best and be the best. And there's cars out there with a lot of nice stuff and modifications. But if you're fighting the track and the track just doesn't allow for you to go faster, you ain't going to go faster. So, again, like you're saying with the TDI, the car's got nice stuff, but it's lacking the track. So he yeah. can only do so much with what he has. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then for the guys that don't know what we're talking about is when we say the tracks are not comparable to overseas, we're talking about the traction at the track. So how fast you can go, let's say, from a standstill to the 60 foot. Our 60 foots are way off. Like you say, the East Coast that has records here and yeah. stuff. But uh, in general... I mean, when, when Quentin and Marius and them went overseas, how much have their times improved? Just taking the same course that they run here, taking yeah. them that side, and then learning the setup there by the track in a day or two, and then running them there. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, so again, like Etienne is saying, it's, um, the, it's the traction that we lack in. Yeah. But obviously, the facility that's out there and the, the equipment that they have, no one's going to fund that here. And also, I don't blame the track owners of the country of South Africa because... It's not as big of a sport as it is overseas. So, yes. you know, we can't want to fight and point fingers. I think we need to support all the tracks, you know. I can't, I like and I enjoy every track in SA that I've raced. I've raced Mkuzi, raced PE, Kilani, um, Talton. I, I've done all the tracks. Okay, obviously, like the Tabam Chu and stuff like that, I haven't done those. But all the major tracks I've done, in, and there's something that I like about each one of them. You know, if you go to Talton, I love the layout. The traction's next level at Talton. Yeah. The DA can catch you on, on a date. The DA tends to be high. A lot of people won't know what's DA, but yeah. Um, the DA, on a, it can catch you off guard there because I've seen an average of 2.5 at Midval and they're about 3.3, three, 3.4 three, three, at Talton on the same Which day. It was, it, it's a big difference, you know. I would I would guesstimate at least 0.1, 0.2 on a, any vehicle of your time, which is quite a bit. On a yeah. bike, you're fighting for that 0.1. Yeah. It, it's a lot. I mean, when we go to Kalani or Daisy or for that matter when we're at the coast what DA do you see there Yeah, we to see. compare to Talton for instance so to compare so guys DA is density at altitude so it's obviously the thickness in the uh, thickness of the air so when you go down at a stage when Keith ran his time on the bike in PE um, 
the DA was in the minus. First in my life, I was so Yeah, I've never seen a so minus. So we saw DA minus. I think it was a minus two fifty that day. But it, the way it panned out, we had practice the Friday or the Saturday. I can't recall now. In the main event, the day after. It was the, the Friday, and then the Saturday got rained out. Yes, and the racing was the yes. Sunday, wasn't so, not. Yes, hundred percent. So the rain had changed everything. Because when we looked at the DA prior to the rain on the test, we were about five fifty, five hundred, which is a little bit high considering being down yes, at the course. Yeah. We normally see two hundreds and three hundreds. So we were like, okay, what's cutting here? Because PE is the closest to actual sea level. You're two kilometers away, give or take. I think, if I'm not mistaken, from actual sea. Yeah. And uh, we were like, this is a bit odd, but anyway. It rained out the second day, so we couldn't race. They moved it over one day, and then we saw the minus DA. And all the Joburg Oaks started running to each other. I think it was Casper, if I'm not mistaken, and somebody else. We all like, listen, check, is your draggy working? The DA is minus. We're like, oh, sure, okay, yeah, it's minus. It yeah, can't be right. I've never we seen never thought, minus, okay, yeah. not. But here's the scary part. Down in the States, the Oaks race minus 2,000. Yeah. Minus. Yeah, it, it was I think it's Maryland. It's actually below sea, sea level. level. So it's... It's inland, but it's yeah, below, below sea, sea level. level. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Where we don't get that here. Yeah. Here, passing hot thing, we, yeah. I think we 1.2, 1.3 kilometers above sea level. Yeah. 1 to 90 is, is what we are. Yeah. More which more is less. rather bad. So, if I look at, if I do a comparison, how big of a difference DA makes. So, if I tell you, okay, at Talton, at 3,000 DA, you're going to run, okay, we'll use actual figures. I went nine, I went 947 at Talton with the 3.5 or 3,300 DA. Down at the coast with the 200, 300 Diago 90. At Mkuzi. At Mkuzi and down at PE. So, okay. um, Mkuzi is slightly higher than the rest. Mkuzi is not yeah, actually so actual Mkuzi coastal. Is not nowhere near yes, the coast. coast. Yes, yeah, it's not so coastal. But um, the DA makes a big difference when it comes to drag racing. So, let alone the track facility or the track traction that we're talking about or the traction issues we have in the country, we've got our, t- our climate that doesn't play along with us. Yeah. But, I mean, we also can't. We can't pick and choose everything. We can't have our bread button on both yeah. sides, you know. So yeah. No, but like I say, what what we do here, I feel is impressive. And I commented on a video earlier today, where someone told me it was an old video of Quibus when he ran. I think it was a eight fifty seven or something at yeah. at uh, at Makuzi. He, oh, at Daisy, sorry. So the guy commented, he said, yeah, that's not fast because there's bikes in Thailand, like 400cc bikes or something mm. in Thailand that runs those times. Yeah. And I was like, sure, but, but there's guys in the States that run these times on these bikes yeah. on a stock wheel base, yeah. whereas we, we do it with a long wheel long base. base yeah. But considering, once again, our tracks, our, uh, the, the, the climate and stuff that we're racing, yeah. I mean, Quibus and Keith is running 8.3s now which is the fastest in Africa for aspirated bike. So no turbo, no gas, motor only. Yeah, no motor, motor only. So so there's a reason they are the fastest. Mm. It's not because they are slow. They are slow compared to guys in the States. States, yes, yeah. But bring one of them here. We, Ricky Gatz. Ricky, 100%. Your so yeah, I like, I like teasing Ricky Gatz and he's never replied to any one of my posts, but it's fine. I'll carry on digging that one. <laughs> um, Chris Moore's next. I told I told Kuba, so he goes he goes eight one. I'm calling Chris Moore. Out. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever reply to that one. Yeah, anyway. so it would be interesting. It's the same uh, discussion. If let's say someone from the states has to come here and race, then we we want to see the times. Yeah. And it's the same as guys from Cape Town. I feel like they only race Cape Town. Yeah, they don't come out of Cape Town for them. Yeah. We. I think the biggest event I've seen here at Midwell had four or five Cape Town guys, and yeah. that was impressive for yeah. us. That's we always saw... travel there. We travel to Makuzi, yeah. uh, Daisy, wherever, but they don't come here. You know, I, and I said that on the, I'm not going to mention the, the group, but I mentioned that on the group the other day when they said, okay, who's all coming? You're like, well, York's the one that come here. Well, obviously, they're going to go slower here. We all know that it's a yeah, obvious. Yeah, and I feel like there. that's why they don't want to come. 100% that's that they don't want to come here. But, I mean, compare apples with apples because then you get an oak down at the coast saying, okay, well, I've got the seven-hour record. Yeah, dude, you got it down at the coast because you ain't going to run that time here. That's exactly. It's proven. It's not something we thumb suck or it's not a guesstimate. It's fact. You're always going to be slower up here at altitude than you will be yeah. unless you're having issues down there. That, you know, then only you're going to be slower. But, um, yeah, also, I haven't seen much Cape Town guys or out-of-towners come and come to Joburg yeah. because obviously they're going to go slow. The Durban yeah. guys do support, though. They yes, come yeah. out in I numbers. think it's more for following. They enjoy the, 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 the jaw. And, you know, again, you can see it's different. You know, when we had 
when we went down to Mkuzi, when the bikers came, like there was a bit of tension, but then by the second day, we all, we, day, you yeah. know, we clicked. When the Durban guys come over, it's different, you know, we're all friends, we're all joking, we're all laughing. There's, yeah. there's, there isn't much of a separation, even though there's a lot of competitiveness between the two. But like when I went down now to Cape Town with the bike for the first time, I was like, okay, I feel out of place because it's not the same vibe and gel that what we have. Yeah. It's like, okay, you there in your corner, that's your corner and you chill there. There yeah. was a few Oaks that came and spoke, but they were not racing that day. It was Oaks that know of us and stuff yeah. like that. And then again, talking about Kovas and Keith, I feel sorry for Oaks like that because they, their riding capability is not the limiting factor. It's literally yeah. just the track. You know, they, they, I look up to them. They're the ones that taught me. Keith got me onto a bike. Kovas is tuning my bike and working on my bike. Um, I look up to them generally, like if I look at the amount of effort and time, and someone takes away it's something like weight, you know. Corpus is not the lightest of oaks, and we had that discussion coming back now, now when he was with me. Keith is the lightest of Keith oaks. Is the lightest. I saw him on the scales yes, yesterday. No, Keith, Keith is he super is light. the lightest of Keith oaks. He's super light, and on, and on a bike, it makes a big difference. And again, like I say, just as as Keith being light helps him, it also knocks him. Because that bike tends to lift, obviously, if, you, if you're heavy yeah, oak like me, 60 you well. know, so... I, again, to him and everyone who's run, you know, times again in South Africa, I think we need to take a step back and acknowledge everyone in, in every facet of, of drag racing as such because, it, truth be told, we are fighting the tracks. That's what we're racing against. We're yeah. racing the tracks. You know, When it comes to management systems, we've got them. We've got turbos, power. Everything is there. Like yeah. you said, when, when the other guys went overseas, we were top competitors and contenders. I mean, Putty Butler's BM is not the fastest in the world. Yeah, because he went there, but yeah. down here back in South Africa, it and Dubi also ran. Was he not the fastest for G in the world when for he the went time, there? Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, when he went there, yes, yeah. yeah, which he, I don't think he achieved that year. No, no, he went and broke the record that side. Yeah, yeah. even Ian Repsol, um, a lot of people won't maybe might not know him, but yeah, Ian Repsol also obviously went out there. He's 60 foot or better racing the racing scene, obviously, it's just on another level, obviously. Yeah, but again, we can't complain, it's not like we can pack our bags and leave, you know, South Africa is home. I would love to go yeah. and experience that side of the I world. I think we have to pack our bags and do an event that side. Maybe just go and check. <laughs> we'll wait then, for um... a sponsor. We'll wait for <laughs> a sponsor. Guys, whoever wants to sponsor us, please, sponsorships is open. Um, on that topic, you know, how how we met and um, we enjoy the racing scene. or It's a car scene as much or, or the racing scene. Let's call it the racing scene. Again, like we said, going forward with the podcast, we want to have car owners, shop owners, racers, track owners, event organizers, anybody's got to do with the car scene slash racing scene, yeah. drag scene. Um, you know, we're open to, we, we also want to give people exposure because a lot of people don't know. Um, I don't want to mention names because I don't know if they're going to be one to come on board. But, you know, the Oak down the road of the mag shop, someone might not know of him because he's never been exposed yes. again we want to give exposure to everyone who shares the liking of yeah. what we enjoy as yeah, well like you i know? said it doesn't have to be drag racing only. Yes. it's anyone in the core community 100 percent, yeah anyone in the so core i think community. we can you know the guys can either contact myself or you via social media yeah. our phone numbers are everywhere you know if they want to come on and join and say well okay listen we want to be there we want to advertise our business because uh, again like i said we want to help each other grow yes yeah. and also just have a good chat you know with like-minded people and stuff I don't know, you want to be behind the camera most of the time. But yeah. um, you can also chat to the Oaks. I'll be chatting to the guys. Um, but yeah, no, definitely, you know, um, I think a lot of my friends have now come from drag racing. I've met a lot of new people through drag racing. And I'll forever be grateful for drag racing. You know, I think with yourself as well, your friends yeah. and the people, you know, it's all all the racing scene people. Yeah, like I say, if, if we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't have been doing it seven days a week. Yeah. We would have went into IT or something like that and yeah. drag race on Nothing the weekends. Nothing against IT. No, yeah. no, 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 no. no, no I'm <laughs> saying... It's like an IT <laughs> delete our page. <laughs> no, no. What I mean is, is we, if we didn't enjoy it as much as we do, we would have gotten a normal day job for that yeah. instance or for that matter and do the drag racing on the weekends. But we've made it our lives right. to do it seven days yeah. a week as much as we can. Yeah. Like, I mean, if Quibus phones me, he wants to go and test on a Wednesday. Yeah. I enjoy that. Mm. I go with him to the track. Yeah. I stand there. You know, you've been with us this yes, thing. Yeah. Or when we leave on a Wednesday to go to an event, an yeah. out of town event. Um, that's that's life, man. Yeah, that's, that's and, what and I you enjoy. Know, again, the more that we talk about the stuff, the more it's like light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. Again, if you're not exposed to it, you won't understand. People don't see the twelve o'clock, the one o'clock, the three o'clock mornings, the four o'clock mornings. We're still in the shop 
haven't gone home, haven't slept, either getting a bike ready for racing or co- and it's because of the passion. Our Shane Corbus at the but the illegal, but the road that we test on the night before an event. I need to make sure that the car is fine. And I can't want to go to the track and make sure it's fine. It doesn't work like that, you know. Yeah. So we're making ten second passes on the street and hoping yeah. we can stop in time by the robot. Yeah. You know. But people don't know that. If people only see yeah. oh we ran a ten second oh lacquer like now must be nice they bought all the mods and just on and but it's hard in. work to get there. There's a lot of work time and effort. I've spent and, you know. okay, I've done it once that we went to the track, raced, went back to the shop, fixed the stuff, yeah. went back the next morning with zero sleep. Yeah. So we worked through the night just to make sure we make day two of racing. Yeah. And like I said, I wouldn't trade that for nothing yeah. in the world. I think that's when you fun. look back at it and you get to talk about the stories, that's that's the lack of part. And it's it's something actually money can't money can't buy buy you that that feeling, you know. Especially when you go back and having issues and you've got it right eventually and you've succeeded and you're like, yo, now that's now you know it was worth it. it yeah. Like, when you say money, one thing that I want to say is, uh, whether you have a nine second call, or thirteen second call, we can go to the track and have equally as much fun. Yeah. You don't have to be the fastest guy out there. We can have equally as much fun. It's about the passion and the people that's yeah. there at the racing. I'm glad that you touched on that topic. So I was trying at a stage I had posted there on, on my on my business page saying that. Whoever wants to learn or start drag racing, contact me, come with us to the track. I feel that people feel there's a lot of separation that I have to be a big drag car to race. But even if you got your mom's, and it might sound as funny as this, as your mom's Kia Picanto, come and race it if you want to. You know, we're not going it, to, it has to grow and it has to start somewhere. You all don't of, have to have a big started car. from there. No, no, all exactly of us started that. from there. I mean, there I used to spend my mom's when car when I was going to buy milk in bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, when your dad and mom gave you their cars back in the day, back when you were in school, that's where all of this started. 100%. I'm pretty sure no one woke up one day, bought a nine second car, got in it and drove it. We all start from the bottom and work our way up. And again, it's crazy, you know, when I started, we forget how time goes by and 10 years doesn't sound like a long time ago. 14 years doesn't sound like a long time ago. Time has flying, like flown by and I've been watching videos of racing from back in the day. And I'm like, that car's still around. I cannot believe it. It's been 20 years. It's been 14 years. Like people like that haven't given up, still sharing the passion. And it gets tiring. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes it gets frustrating. You know, for my... I've been to four events and, and can't go any faster, whatever it is. It becomes frustrating to a certain point. Yes, it's also because of me, but you, you also with the cars, you reach a certain point and you think, okay, I get frustrated, I give up. But Oaks that got their cars 10 years, 14 years, still racing it, no kudos yeah. to them. Maybe. But I feel like that's where the difference comes in between someone who goes out and buys a fast car and someone like us who lives this life. It's... Uh, You'll go and buy a fast car, it'll break, you'll fix it, it'll break, you'll fix it. By the third or the fourth time, it'll give up. Not you'll yet. sell the car, you'll never go back to racing yeah. again. Whereas us, we might end up selling the car, but you'll buy something else, else you'll you start again. Your, yes, or you yeah. carry on with that same car until you get it right. The other thing I picked up with people in general, and obviously in the industry that we in, people, you know, when they forge their engine, they say, well, okay, you forge my engine, it can never break. Or I'm putting a, a bigger turbo, it can never break. And I always and I always like make sure that I get this message through. If you go to any manufacturer, I'm not going to mention names, and I get a law, uh, lawyer's letter. Go to any manufacturer's dealership. Go to any dealership in the country, an OEM brand new car dealership. Go take a walk into the workshop, and you're going to find stock standard cars that are broken. As why? Well, why do you get a warranty with a brand new car if they don't break down? Hundred percent. So That's cars break, whether they're modified, whether they're stock. Cars are going to yeah. break. It happens, you know. Again, if, like if, you, if say, you upgrade the stuff, we try to make them more efficient at the power yeah. that you are chasing. Yes, but that does not mean stuff not is gonna not going to go wrong. Hundred percent. Yeah, it can go wrong at no, any given point in time. Yeah. So again, I think as we go along, we'll obviously touch on topics that people's myths and misconceptions of a lot of things. You know, because yeah. I feel the aim also of what we want to do is we want to grow the industry, grow the sport as well. We want to see new people at the race. Of like course. the other day there was two, an extra, what is it, one bike, two extra bikes yes, at yeah. Midfall. That was like lack of like shit. It's always the same bikes over and over. Like yeah, so two yeah. newbies. It's nice, you know. Yeah. So Same with the lens event. Yeah. Uh, and I remember that from last year as well. When you go to the lens event, there's a lot of people that we don't see like every weekend or every other a weekend lot. when you go to the track. A lot. And I'm like, where are these people? Yeah. Where do they hide? Yeah. Why don't they come to the track? Maybe they do street racing, I'm yeah. not sure. But why don't you see them at more events? So yeah. I enjoy that event for for a 
different perspective. Yeah. There's a lot of different cars. I don't know what this car is going to do. So let's check. Check, yeah. I'll try and enjoy that. And again, I think it goes back to because I speak to a lot of people uh, in that aspect. Because I, I like speaking, like you said. And I asked the Oaks, like, why don't you want to come to this event? Or why don't you come and race? I've got customers who've got bloody fast cars. Like, come race. No, I'm not going to line up next to the dragster. I'm going to lose. I'm like, that shouldn't be your mindset. Like, yeah. that's not what it's about. It's uh, not I'm really about it, winning. Yeah. It's I'm about gonna, the experience yeah, of the day. 100%. Like I said, the people you go with, yeah. that experience. We've got yeah. a lucky group going yes, now. Yeah. Before, it was me and Quibus and one or two friends. But yeah. we've, we've grown into a big group. Yeah. And like I say, when we go to out-of-town events, you know, our group is always sticking together. Yes, yeah. and, and that's the, the experience. The exp- again, with, like I can agree with you 100% there. And it's a small thing that, you know, People see it like the other day. Someone was like, "Yeah, check your oaks spray champagne on each other." It's, it's something different, you know. We celebrating. People don't understand that achievement oh, and that we milestone. To get to that, BB. And and it's not, you know, it's, it's something that you might never be able to do again. So embrace the moment. We're having fun, and yeah, th- that that group that I must say, the group that we travel with or go with, it's awesome because you know it's different people from different walks of life. And again, we actually only came together because we share the same passion. Exactly. Yeah. About, you yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's going to be it. Guys, if you have any suggestions on what you want to see or who you want to see, we can get in contact with them. Or if one of the viewers wants to come on board, do a podcast episode with us, you're more than welcome to reach out. Um, Raul's number, you can get him on Colab. You can comment on the video. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, all of that stuff. He's Colab. I'm Etienne CCD or CCD Tuned or CCD Video. Um, you guys can reach out to us. This is an open thing. If you guys want to see something, tell us about it so we know this is our very first podcast. So we didn't know what to expect, but I think we had some great fun today. Yep. Touched on a lot of topics, yep. which we know everything. We know it's about the experience, but once you start talking about it, you realize that's actually what's fun. Oh, so yeah. after this, we're going to Midval and it's going to be a fun As experience. As in now. We're going to Midval yeah. now. To race, now. Seat, race it now. Yeah, so that's going to be another fun experience. I'm, I'm lucky because I don't have to race my car. I can race my customers' car and tell his <laughs> tires and his shoes. Exactly. But before, before we end, Etienne, I think um, just to keep people um, coming back for more, guys, um, days of our lives, basically, it'll it, it's it, it's gonna repeat. Days of our lives, the amount of juicy stories, uh, politics, Because, I mean, and, there, and is, nonsense. there is a lot of politics in the race, so we will battle into that. It'll um, make days of our lives look small. <laughs> Scandal or seventh allowed, whichever one you watch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean we we will delve into that. Yeah. So yeah, that's going to be it, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Catch you on the flip side. Cheers. <laughs>